Save your leftover squash, save your leftover sweet potatoes, put them together to make one delicious casserole. Or go out and buy brand new ones and still make it. You could do that too. Yeah, so many options it here to matter. show us how to as make it. Do it. Chef John Slattery from 4 Main Street in Huntington. He's the birthday boy. Hey, hey happy birthday. Uh, what are you, uh, are you 28? Something like that. All right, we'll oh, go the same with age. It. That's no. awesome. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, Leftovers or buying or smart meal planning where you you know buy five pounds of potatoes or five pounds of sweet potatoes and a big squash and you decide what you're going to do with it all week. So uh, things like if you're having baked sweet potatoes with your steak dinner one night and then you're going to have a couple you bake them all so you don't have to touch them again and then the next time now we're going to we've scooped them out and we have the meat for that. Uh, another meal we baked some squash and we had some left you know so we had squash and so we we didn't need the whole squash to feed our family. Before. It was a big squash so we put some aside for incorporating. So as you plan your meal and do your shopping especially this time of year you know go to the farmers market see what's available um, you can kind of utilize things in different ways to, to uh, throughout the week. So you're not eating the same exact thing every day, you break into different stuff. And there's just ways that you can sneak these vegetables into things without it tasting the same, like just changing up the Absolutely. Flavor. Absolutely. So many of these different squashes have different tastes. You know, butternut is kind of a more of a of a blander blander squash, but this um, I believe it's a kabucha or a Japanese pumpkin or something like that. It's a it's a very much sweeter. It's almost tastes like pumpkin pie with the sugar and everything in it already. Really? Just no baked way. with nothing else in it. Uh, so we did that. There's a lot of different ways you can cook, cut, and peel squashes too. So. And we learned earlier this week that you can store these throughout the vast majority of the winter in your home easily. And this time of year they're on sale too, so you could probably pick up a lot of them. Yeah, and get them cheaper. If you go to a, go to a farm and get them where they're field fresh, yeah. Uh, make sure that you know you you, uh, you clean them really good, and you can put them in a cold storage or something somewhere in your cellar yeah. in a dry place. They must have said. And uh, absolutely, we do the same thing at the restaurant. We work with a lot of local farmers and uh, pick up as much local produce as we can, and, and we we store it in proper places. Um, so that we were able to use it, uh, you know, for months on. So how does one get started putting it all together? Well, I was just talking about um, easy ways to cook the butternut squash. I wanted to give a quick tip. Um, you know, peeling it. Uh, we talked about having using the Y peeler versus the old stick peeler because those are a lot better in some of the other shows that I've been on. So once you get it peeled, and you can dice it into small pieces, and you can put it into um, a microwave-safe container and a little bit of boiling water. This is a trick. If you use, already start with a little boiling water, like I know really? a lot of people keep a kettle on the stove or a kettle on their wood stove. So you've already got clean boiling water. It makes things happen a lot faster. A little boiling water cause in, uh, into the, the container, but not enough to like make it, not, we're not trying to boil it in there. We're steaming yeah, it, we're using right. the heat from the boiling water. And in and two minutes, these squash will be cooked. Interesting. And it looks something like this we have over here. Yep, and now Looks we're going to move on. But anyway, that's an easy easy method. You starting with the boiling water and, and steaming a vegetable in a microwave can safe container is like the, the best uh, steaming uh, that you can do. It locks in all the juices and doesn't rinse it away by boiling. You could boil it. Oh. You could steam it over a pot. There's so many different ways. You can cut them in half and bake them in the oven. So once you get the squash cooked and, what, and the potatoes cooked, uh, then we have to build the castle. So you'll never say you don't know how to cook a squash. Yeah, if you've watched Masterpiece at any point this week, <laughs> you get it. <laughs> so we're going to put a little bit of the sweet squash because that's mushy. And, uh, and it's going to be a binder, as well as the sweet potato. I love the color of it, too. Yeah, nice orangey yeah, kind of dish. Yeah, it's so pretty. That's true. And you don't need to go with pumpkin to get that orangey. Right. Oh, and pumpkin has pumpkin. Unfortunately, doesn't have a lot of flavor unless you get one of those specialty pumpkins where they have a dense dense meat. So mm -hmm. you know you could use that, but it would be kind of watery. So you That's have to why everything's add pumpkin these, spice. Yes. You don't have to add, add all the, the spice. spice to yeah. it. We're gonna add a little spice to this too, just to zip it up. All right. Um, and then we, so we've got the, the mushy the mushy squashes and the sweet potatoes okay. in the bowl. And you mix it all, mush it all together. Yeah, we're gonna mush that with in with uh, some of these. Now these are the um, dried sweetened cranberries. Um, I think somebody makes a brand name, but dried sweetened cranberries. And then what I did overnight, I soaked them in cranberry juice, so I've rehydrated them. They're no longer dry. They're so um, cranberry e. Yeah, yes. And then the extra cranberry juice and more, more vitamins, good for you. Now, what if you didn't soak them? They would just be dry. They would be drier, and most likely they would they would burn maybe when the casserole was baking because they didn't have as much moisture, so they would dry out so even more. So that's an important burn. step. So moistening them uh, will give more moisture to the casserole as well. Okay. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit of cracked pepper. Fresh ground. Yes, absolutely better flavor. A little bit of sugar or brown sugar or molasses or honey, whatever sweetener that you have on hand, uh, agave, you know, you could, you know, all kinds of different things. And then we're going to put just a pinch of nutmeg in, you know, traditional squash flavoring style. Yeah. That's and all you, you need. You don't want to go overboard on the nutmeg. And a little ginger. A little ginger? Oh. Yeah, I like a little zip. Huh. You like a little what? A little zip. A little zip. I like the dance move. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, I, I had a feeling. I, I knew that. <laughs> those now, squash, those are squash are done. We have some. We already cooked, so we'll leave those over it's there. It's the microwave. Even? Yeah. Everything's okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> and then we have a little bit of vanilla extract just to make it oh. fancy. Maybe give us that comforting yeah. taste. Oh. And so we've got that together. And those, those, the mushy ingredients are mushed together. And then we're going to just gently fold in the uh, cooked butternut squash cubes. Oh, wow. I like that vanilla 
addition there. Yeah, it just kind of makes it different. We like to do things different at the restaurant. We always add a different spice, a little tweak. I like yeah. to use things like cardamom sometimes. Keeps people or, coming back. Yeah, absolutely. And it also, you know, you have those familiar recipes that you know, but it, it makes it a totally different. You know, shepherd's pie, everyone's tried it, but I'm sure if you have that on your menu, yours is different. Right, absolutely. We, we grind it, we use all of our steak trim and we grind it into our own into See, meat maker it. shepherd's pie it. and we use local corn that we freeze in season. Now, we're doing mini, mini pot pies, yeah. mini casseroles. Mini right? casseroles. So I'm just loading them up and trying to make sure that I get some of the QB stuff on top so that when it, because it'll, it'll give a texture to the brownness when it when it browns. Yeah, it gives pretty. it that rustic look, right? So we make it look pretty because that'll it'll all lock into place as it browns. And that's that's really a nice simple casserole. And you can really, you can change some of the ingredients. Uh, that mushy squash like the kabucha or, and the sweet potato, they give a good binder to the casserole and then, um, you know, something else that has fillers. And then that's, you know, basically what a casserole is. It's something that binds it together and something to fill it. Bake it in the oven and voila. Now, at what temperature for how long? We're going to put these in the oven at 425. Well, we're going to put we're going to do TV time, so we're going to put them at a little higher temperature. You probably want to do these in your oven at home at 375 for about a half hour to 45 minutes to get a, a slow cook and a nice a nice brown. And that's if it's in these little dishes. What if it, you have it in a casserole dish? You're making it. It would still style. probably be about the same. Same thing. Yep. And if you wanted to speed it up, you could actually do the incorporate the mixing in a sauté pan and, and put it warm into the casserole dish and put it in the oven. It'll cut the time in half. Speeds uh -huh. up your time. Now later in the show, we're going to make some cocktails because we have a, a lot of booze over here. We're making oh, yeah. cocktails. We're making later. cocktails. All right. Halloween, so we're doing Toast to you. fall, and then we're gonna get, and then we're gonna do drinky drinks for uh, Halloween. <laughs> Very so. seasonal. John Slattery, thank you so much. We'll be Thanks back for having me today. In a little bit to finish up these recipes and more. Thanks, John.